Hello there. So, okay, um, we are going to talk about gravity and stuff. And this is really a short lecture on the gravitational force, both on the surface of the Earth and everywhere else, uh, aimed at like an introductory physics level. So let's just go through some examples here. Uh, I originally was going to do some stuff live, but uh, I'm trying to save time. Okay, so let's start with this very simple example. Suppose you had a grain of salt in your hand. I'm actually holding, I'm holding my hand out as though there was a grain of salt there. And salt is like one of the, a grain of salt is like one of the smallest things you could pick out individually. That's why I'm using it. You put that in your hand, um, how much, how would, how would that feel? What would that feel like? So that grain of, of salt has a net force of zero since it's at rest, so that the hand's pushing up and the gravitational force pulls down, and what would that force on the hand be? Let's say that the salt has a mass of 0 0.0077 grams. I actually measure that for you. Okay, so if you did that, and you should do that, okay, uh, so, and there's a mistake right here with the minus sign, but it's just you've got to convert that mass to kilograms. So it's 7.7 .7 times 10 to the negative 6 kilograms multiply by the gravitational field G of 9.8 newtons per kilogram, and you get 7.55 times 10 to the negative 5th newtons. 10 to the negative 5th newton is an important number to remember because you can't feel that grain of, you can't really feel. If someone puts a grain of salt on your hand, you don't know if it's there or not. You can't feel that. It's too small. That's important. We'll come back to that. So if you go and ask your friends, and you should, what causes gravity? Okay, here are some of the common answers that people have. The Earth's atmosphere causes gravity. Because if you go to space, there's no air and there's no gravity. Makes sense? The rotation of the Earth causes gravity. I know that rotating things cause special effects, special forces. So maybe that's what causes the Earth's gravity. Uh, Magnets attract things without touching, so maybe the Earth's magnetic field causes gravity, or maybe something else. Okay, so let's go through these three ideas and see if those are true, then what would that lead to? So here is a video of astronaut an astronaut walking on the moon, and there's no air on the moon. So how can an astronaut walk on the moon without gravity? Again, you should ask your friends, because it's a fun question to talk about. And the surprising answer that comes up more than you would think is heavy boots. They have heavy boots and that helps them. There's no gravity on the moon, but they have heavy boots and that helps them walk on the moon. And that's not true. Okay. There is indeed gravity on the moon, even though there's no air. Here's another example. This is from a show uh, where they were trying to do some really cool science and they did. And um, they take a ball and a feather and they put it in this room and they pumped all the air out of the room. It's a huge, huge, huge room. But you'll notice two things. One, the ball and the feather fall the same, the same acceleration. Two, they fall, okay? So even though there's no air in this room, they still fall. So you take out the air, there's still gravity. So the Earth's atmosphere does not cause gravity. Here's another video. This is a basketball spinning with some clay stuck onto it. And I have a video camera mounted on the spinning platform so you can see the clay. And you'll notice as I spin faster and faster, eventually the clay falls off. Okay, that's observation number one. The basketball is like the Earth, it doesn't spin that fast. So here is another picture of the Gravitron, or as I like to call it, the Barfomatic 5000, because this just makes me sick. Okay. But the idea is you get these humans up against this wall inside this machine, it spins, and they stick to the wall. So here's the idea that people may think, oh, well, spinning causes gravity. But there's a big difference between the gravitron and the ball. The ball, the clay is on the outside and it gets flung away. These are on the inside of the spinning thing. Okay, so if Earth caused gravity, it, the faster it spins, the more it would get you to fling off the Earth. Okay. And I'm skipping over a bunch of stuff there, but I think you get the idea. So it's not the rotation of the Earth. And then here's another video. I'm not even going to show it. Um, if I take a magnet and see what I'm showing, I'm going to show it, and, and see what it attracts to. It attracts to steel. It attracts to iron. But, and steel and iron are also fall if you drop them. But the magnet does not attract wood. The magnet does not attract copper, a copper penny. With, with zinc inside of it. It does not attract clay. It does not attract plastic. But all these things are still attracted to the Earth. So if the Earth's magnetic field 
cause gravity, then only steel and iron and things like that would fall. What does cause gravity is mass. Objects with mass cause gravity. So here are two pictures of a Cavendish experiment. The Cavendish experiment shows that masses have a gravitational interaction with each other even though it's very weak. So this picture on the left, I don't know if you see this, can I use my mouse and see? No. Okay. The picture on the right has a meter stick with two masses on the ends and supported by a string in the middle. You can barely see it. When you support that meter stick in the middle, the tiny, tiny, tiny little forces pushing on the meter stick on the ends can get it to rotate. So by putting those two large bowling balls there, there is a gravitational interaction between the mass and the bowling ball that's super, super, super tiny. But since the meter stick can rotate that way, if you let it sit for a while and you remove the air and stuff, it will slowly rotate and you can see that. And you can see this gravitational interaction between the bowling ball and the masses on the stick. That's kind of awesome. On the left, you see here a picture of an actual Cavendish experiment that we use in lab. Uh, this has two glass balls balls uh, on a horizontal rod suspended by a wire and it's covered in glass so the air doesn't push it. And then there's a large lead ball that you can get really close to it and that whole bar will bend just a little bit. And you can measure the bending of the bar and from that calculate the gravitational force between the masses on the bar and the big lead mass. So with that we get the following model for the gravitational force. Gravitational force is a fundamental interaction between objects sorry, that have the property mass. So any objects that have mass have an attractive force between them. The magnitude of this force depends on the product of the two masses, so it depends on mass 1 and mass 2, and the distance between their centers. So this, we get this G, M1, M2 over R squared. It's the square of the distance between their centers. G is the gravitational constant, 6.67 times 10 to the negative 11th Newton meter squared per kilogram squared, which is super tiny. And so you can see that we have a super, super tiny gravitational force. Now, if I switch the masses, if I switch mass 1 and mass 2, I get the same magnitude of force. It doesn't matter the order that I operate those. So the force of mass 2 pulling on mass 1 is the same as the force of mass 1 pulling on mass 2, but in the opposite direction. And this is true for all forces. Forces always come in pairs, not just with gravity. Okay, let's do an example. Here are two humans separated by one meter. They both have a mass of 70 kilograms. So what is the gravitational force pulling them together? So what's the force of M1 on M2? So here's all the data. Go ahead, pause the video. I really mean pause it and see if you can calculate this yourself because that's really how you're going to learn. You're going to need to do that. Okay, so pause it. I'm waiting. Okay, I hope you paused it. So here's, here's the solution. So I use Python. I was going to do this live. Uh, this is Trinket Python. So it, it has some, uh, you can do it in a web page and stuff like that. So trinket.io, go there and go to GlowScript, new GlowScript, and you can do this. So I, I put my variables down there and I calculate the gravitational force in line seven and I print it out. And you see the force over here on the right, F equals 3.2683 times 10 to the negative seventh. So compare that to the salt, 10 to the negative fifth. So this is like a hundred times weaker force. You would not notice this gravitational force between two people. It's just too tiny. You couldn't even measure it. How about another example? Here is an interaction between a human, 70 kilograms, and the Earth. Okay, so the human, 70 kilograms, the Earth has a huge mass, 5.972 times 10 to the 24th kilograms, and a radius of 6.3. 378 times 10 to the 6 meters. Pause. Pause the video. Calculate the gravitational force on the person. I hope you did it. Okay. What did you use for R in this case? In this case, uh, the how big is a human? Let's say they're 2 meters tall, which is too big. Then the distance from the center of the Earth to the person would be the radius of the Earth plus a meter. Okay, so 6.378 times 10 to the 6 plus 1 meter is 
3.78 times 10 to the 6. It, you don't have to do that. You can just use the radius of the Earth. And here's my calculation in Glow Script again. Uh, I get a significant gravitational force of 685 newtons. If I use the other formula to calculate the gravitational force mg, I get 686. So this is the same thing. Okay. So mg and the gravitational force on the surface of the Earth give you the same thing. And so this, so we have two models for gravity. We have the F equals G M1 M2 over R squared. That one is essentially always true. It's going to be always true in your course. Uh, there are weird things with gravity, uh, spinning black holes and warped space time and stuff like that, but this, this is going to work for you. And then we have this MG model for the gravitational force. This is the gravitational force if you're on the surface of the Earth. But notice that if I take G times the mass of the Earth divided by the radius of the Earth squared, I get little g. I get 9.8. Okay, that's where that comes from. Because if you're on the surface of the Earth, you don't change g, big G. You don't change the mass of the Earth. You don't change the radius of the Earth. So those are all constant, and that constant happens to be 9.8 newtons per kilogram. Another example. This is the International Space Station. Uh, suppose we have a human in the space station and the altitude of the space station is 409 kilometers above the surface of the earth what in the mass of the earth is the same the radius of the earth is the same calculate the gravitational force on the person pause i really do hope you pause because you should i should put a pause slide in there but i didn't okay so here's my calculation the only thing i changed is i added line eight I have this h equals 409e3. So I converted the height to meters because everything else is in meters. And then in line 9, instead of r squared, I have r plus h quantity squared. And I print out the force and I print out mg2 and I get 605 newtons for the gravitational force in the space station and I get 686 on the Earth. So it's about the same. I mean, it's, it's lower. You're higher up. It's lower. Okay. But it's not that much lower. Uh, so this is an important point. You're not weightless in space. You're in orbit. You're not. Okay. Um, I'll talk about uh, weightlessness later, but I don't want to get into it right now. Okay. But I do want to make a, a plug for the space station. Have you ever seen the space station? You can see it. It is awesome. You should do it. Uh, so. If you go to this website, heavensabove.com, and enter your location, you can look up the next pass of the space station. So on this chart, a couple things. The brightness, the greater the negative number, the better. So negative 3.8 down there on October 9th, for me, it's going to be a good one. And then it gives you the start time. It gives you the highest altitude, the end time. It's going to be great. So you can just set your alarm. This says like, 747 it starts so i can set my alarm for 745 and go outside and look for it and it's you're going to see it it's great it looks like a like a bright star that moves way too fast so it takes about four minutes to go across the sky uh, and this is what it would if, if you did a time lapse this is what it looks like you can totally see it okay it doesn't even have to be that dark do it it's awesome here is a test question that i've seen on a lot of tests and the question says how high can you move above the surface of the Earth until the mg form of gravitational force is 1% off of the real gravitational force? Okay, pause and do this problem. Okay, here's the solution. So the mg is going to give you a value that's too big as you move higher because it doesn't change. But the actual gravitational force decreases. So if I want to be 1% off, then I'm going to say 0.99 mg is equal to the real gravity, which is g times m times mass of the Earth divided by r plus h squared, where h is my altitude. So right away you see the mass of the object doesn't matter. And now I just need to solve for h. So here's a little bit of algebraic solving, and I get blah, blah, blah. h is 29 kilometers. At 29 kilometers, uh, if I use mg, I'll be off by a percent. So that's not so bad. So, so you can, anything that you do on the surface of the Earth, you're going to be fine. Even jets flying in high altitude. I mean, an air, a passenger airline, you're not going to feel lower gravity. 
Uh, here, you could do this in Python too. This is kind of fun. This is just a plot of the two calculations of the gravitational force as a function of altitude. And you can see that the mg stays constant and the other one decreases and you can find out where their percent are from. Okay, here's another problem. I'm not gonna solve it for you. Uh, here's a astronaut on the moon. Uh, calculate the gravitational force on the moon. So what's different? The moon has a lower mass, seven times 10 to the 22 kilograms and a smaller radius. So people say, oh, gravity is lower on the moon because it's smaller. No, it's lower on the moon because there's less grav there's less mass, okay? In spite of the fact that it's smaller because you're decreasing R, that would increase the force. So go ahead and calculate this. You should get some value that is, you know, it's about one sixth of on the earth around 100, but do that. This is a good question that I'm not going to answer because it's awesome. Um, which has a greater gravitational force on the moon, the earth or the sun? Okay, so there's a, there's, you have to use the earth's mass interacting with the moon and the distance between the earth and the moon, and then the sun pulling on the moon using the sun's mass and the distance from the earth to the sun, which is the same as the distance from the earth to the moon. So here's the data for you for that calculation. You can look it up too, but the mass of the earth, you already had the earth moon distance 3.8 times 10 to the eighth meters. The mass of the moon, I gave you that already. The mass of the sun is 1.989 times 10 to the 30th. It's massive. And then the distance is 1.496 times 10 to the 11th meters. Okay, so I'm gonna stop there, do your homework, practice this stuff, and I will talk to you later.